Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? A tour of media to appeal to men. They need to appear, appeal to the needs of the voters. No truer statement have been, has been said. They need to appeal to the voters. This identity politics, this race politics, this is no different than politicizing a hurricane. Kamala Harris, that's all she's really good at doing is trying to politicize an event. Why are we not looking at this from the perspective of, let's just say everybody was blind. Which I've said a thousand times before, you wouldn't be racist if you couldn't see. That's you the voice of Scroll Tribe, the voice of Michelle. She's driving. Carry on. Carry on, my wayward son. Continue. No, what were you gonna say? Oh, that everybody is basing things off, you know, Obama wants you to vote for Kamala Harris because she's a black female, according to the Democrats, and if you're black, you should vote for her because she's black, but if we're all blind, you wouldn't know what anybody look like, so how are you gonna tell them how to vote? Uh, everybody bleeds the same color, so that's not gonna work. You can't go based off of any kind of color or whatever else. Then it would be, well, based off your tax bracket, based off of your, your income or your zip code or, or whatever else, and it's stupid that we are at a point in time after this this long in civilization that it still comes down to the same people who are telling you that segregation and racism and things need to stop are the same ones that are pushing your vote based on race. It's stupid. Supposedly, the Democrats, Kamala Harris, Tim Walls is the party of civil rights, you know, liberties, personal freedoms and um, gay, you know, all the alphabet letters and the trans and all that stuff and all the rights and everything. Yet they're the party, the campaign consistently throwing that in people's faces by creating these segregated groups of gays for Harris, mm -hmm. blacks for Harris, women for Harris. It's like, why can't we all just be people? Like, I can't poll. just be people for Harris. In the polls, the numbers are the numbers. The mm -hmm. votes are the votes. That's all that really matters. Yeah, they're not breaking down, oh, well, so-and-so got this many votes from the gays, so got this many votes from the blacks, from right. the whites. It's, it doesn't work like that, so why does it matter? And then also, if they are the party for inclusivity and for you do you kind of things like you be you the and party whatever for else, change. the party for change, then they should also be okay with the gay black man wanting to vote for Trump and not for Kamala because they're supposed to be all about inclusivity and and you living your best life and doing what you need to do for you. Now I'm going to reference Tim Walls twice in this video at least because. Barack Obama reminds me of Tim Walls when he says something specifically, which we're going to talk about later, as he scolds this crowd. Because he yells at them. He's angry. He's an angry old man. He's an he, angry black. He, 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 he's an angry black. I, I can't say that, but you can. Uh, but he, he didn't even sound like Obama to me. Like, the way he used to be, he's lost that. And I, it's because the Democrats have just become angry. Angry people. And the other thing is, you remember one of the first things that Tim Walls said? when he first came on the scene, as he attacked J.D. Vance. I'll give you a hint, he attacked J.D. Vance. You remember one of the first things that he said? That he doesn't he doesn't use words correctly? <laughs> that was after he got called out for being a liar. But do you remember one of the ways he tried to attack J.D. Vance? Um, no, I do not. I was gonna say something about military. Well, yeah, you know, Hillbilly Elegy was definitely a topic of discussion and comparing each other's valor as Tim Walls immediately hit the scene and was accused of stolen valor. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that he tried to attack J.D. Vance on was his Ivy League Yale education. Oh, yeah, for which, being smart enough to go to Yale and having the ability to do so, whether it was from money or a um, scholarship. Meemaw. Uh, or just, you know, just there was a combination of things that allowed him to go to Yale. But it almost seems like with Tim Walsh sticking his foot in his mouth and saying things that the campaign doesn't necessarily agree with, which they've never, ever actually said that they don't, much like Doug Imhoff never, ever actually said that these accusations of him slapping around the nanny and, and having this affair and getting some woman knocked up and having an abortion and all that, he only says it's a distraction. He doesn't say that it didn't happen. 
He doesn't argue it. He doesn't defend himself. But we'll save Doug Imhoff for another video. Tim Walsh, he immediately attacks J.D. Vance and pretty much every Ivy League Yale alumni by, by, by calling him out that way. Don't you think that that would have an impact on Ivy League alumni, graduates, current students, future um, students who want to attend Ivy League schools or Yale or whatever? Wouldn't that turn them away from was Kamala it, Harris? Was, I would think so. I would think that being... It's like, oh, I don't want to go to this school because the president and her vice president make fun of people who go to this school. Well, they're making it seem like if you are smart and have the ability to go to a higher level learning center, that there's something a wrong with you. of substance abuse, overcome challenges, uh -huh. serve this country in the military. Mm -hmm. Actually went and served this country in the military. Anyway. Anyway, I, I, is this an interesting thing that dawned on me today as I was scrolling through my feed, collecting my thoughts and these clips like this clip here. Super PACs, which are outraising the big banks and oil this cycle, are now starting to warm up to Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris. An FEC filing just out this week shows that the Ripple Labs co-founder Chris Larson donated $1 million in the XRP token to the future forward Super PAC. Now, that committee is supporting the VP's run for the White House and began accepting donations in digital tokens back in September. All in, Larson has given a total of around $1.9 million to support Harris's campaign. You know, Kamala, her campaign now was really based on more so not her own merit and her own character, her own policies and her past performance and her resume, her ability to speak, uh, deliver a message to a crowd or a town hall or just be genuine, just be a good person, be presidential, support folks in their time of need and disaster situations, hurricane relief and dis recovery. No, none of that matters. The only thing that matters now how many talk shows can I get on? How many podcasts can I get on? How many interviews can I do? All of which have to be friendly. And they have to pre-approve the questions beforehand, and then they have to edit it afterwards. And then outside of that, I just want more people to endorse me. Ripple's founder has just donated $1 million in XRP to the Kamala Harris campaign. And Steven Steele shares, Time to roll your XRP into Trump, which has donated millions to veterans fighting child trafficking and is Donald Trump's number one crypto holding. I heard it as veterans fighting children. I was like, yeah. That <laughs> Put would that be, kid's ass. That would be interesting. Put that, teach that kid some manners. Um, yeah, a little bit of a fumble there, a misspeak or misheard, but not as bad as Kamala and her gaffe, which she's got several, but we're gonna we're gonna go back to her teleprompter gaffe. Because oftentimes I lose the teleprompter. You know, teleprompters go out, but she lost a teleprompter last week. Did you see it? She was talking about 32 days to the election, and she goes, "There are 32 days." Oh, oh my God! I just lost a teleprompter. 32. Then she, 32, 32, 32, 32. And I said, what the hell happened to her? And then the teleprompter kicked back on. 32 days to the election. You don't, you don't want this for your president. <laughs> what the hell happened to her? You don't want this for your president. <laughs> <laughs> no truer words have ever been spoken. You do not want this for your president. What happens when there's no teleprompter? She doesn't Cause, speak. Because we can see what happens when there is a teleprompter. When there's no teleprompter, it's the same old rehearsed, rehashed, do whatever. Do you think... I grew up middle class and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Do you blah, think Putin blah. cares where she grew up? No. I don't what think anyone cares where like, she grew up. Like, grew up, like, grew up. Yeah. Speaking like Kamala, you speaking I, like, I speaking like one of her endorsements, Golly. Magic Johnson, where she grew up. Bless it. No one cares. And I think each and every time that she does this, it just further 
reminds everyone that this isn't what they want. I didn't set it up for this one. Were you going to say something? I was going to say, can you imagine that she has to be in a room with Kim Jong-un, however you say his name, and every other leader of the world that wants to destroy the United States of America, and she giggles and does her stupid laugh, you know, and then tells them that she grew up in a middle-class family, so she understands, blah, 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 blah. I picture her in this room with Kim, jo- Kim Jong-un. Uh, Ill, uh, who? It doesn't matter, right? That, but it's reminding me so of, the, many names. of the scene from Seinfeld where George and Jerry are negotiating this contract for the sitcom, which is really kind of ironic because this is literally Kamala Harris's campaign. It was They were pitching the pilot for a show about nothing. So we're pitching the idea of a campaign and a presidency about nothing. Well, Kamala, nothing. There's nothing up here. She's done nothing. She will do nothing. She will only be a further detriment to this failing nation, which we would like to see turned around. Like if you would want to see America made great again, you want to see us take America back, then hit that thumbs up. But if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And it's they're sitting down with the head of NBC, or, or actually, I think it was they, it was like the Japanese um, mm-hmm. arm extension of. NBC, right? Mm-hmm. I believe so. And George had the great idea of bringing oranges. Yep. He goes, they're a delicacy in Japan. They don't have them over there. And it's like, it made no sense. So they're sitting down, pitching this idea, completely bombing. And then they're like, why did they bring us oranges? <laughs> like, they have no idea why they brought oranges. Which is, I think, is the same way that Kim Jong Un would feel after he goes. Why did she tell me she grew up in a middle class family? It's like, what does that matter? What's she do telling I care? about her lawn for? Just, just go ahead and nuke him. Nuke him. Put yep. him out of the misery. Send the nukes. But if it's not cheap fakes and stage performances and drinking beer and talking sex with OnlyFans girls on Call Her Daddy podcasts or uh, reading teleprompters at Univision town halls or Popping, uh, <laughs> popping beers with uh, Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert. Race baiting with Barack Obama and black men. Do you think Barack Obama cares about black trans? About say, where's trans? Uh, why, why aren't they having black trans for Kamala? Like, is Barack gonna have us? He gonna stand there and talk to black trans? Like, you know, y'all came out for me. Y'all came out of the closet for me when I was running for president. No, Barack, that was just a ditty party. No, <laughs> I was about to say that was a free call. Party. That was a freak off. Side note, there's an entire Tucker Carlson video of some guy talking about how he sucked Barack off in the back of a limousine or something. Oh, fun times. Fun yeah. Times. Gay. But if it's not that, sorry, I got a little sidetracked. It's just violent, dangerous rhetoric. And no, this is not Kennedy. What was the Kennedy lady's name? Ken- Kennedy. Kennedy what? I don't know her whole name. I just know her as Kennedy. Okay, it's not Kennedy. This is Jessica Tarlop. I promise you this is Jessica Tarlop. <laughs> 50-50 chance. This is her, that this is the chance to put the final nail in the coffin so that you don't have Donald Trump on the ballot again. Why the hell would you say that? We gotta quit talking about Donald Trump and coffins because... Uh, but why would, why would you say that? Well, it's Jessica like, Tarlop. But Wait. why would you say that? Because that's how the... The presidential Democrat um, candidate, not nominee, talks. That's how everybody on the Democrat side talks. The president asked for a bullseye on him. They go, they go uh, in a little interview, they said, but Biden, you said, put him in the bullseye. He goes, he goes, no, 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 no. I didn't say crosshairs. I, I didn't say cross it. Like, no one said cross <laughs> No one said cross it. Nobody said cross it. Nobody did. You said bullseye. You said cross it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what was it? Lester Holt left it in. Is that who it was? That was before, after that. They were like, "Well, we want him gone anyway." But we can't in the let future, him we got to edit all of these tapes. Edit all the tapes. Speaking of final nail. And the good news is that you have candidates to vote for in this election that demonstrate that kind of character, who know what real strength looks like, who will set a good example and do the right thing and leave this country better than they found it. So. Um, 
You lost me on the leave this country better than they found it because the one of them has been in office for four years. So she she's made the country the way it is. What good example does Kamala set? Like, if you literally looked at a picture of her family, there's a family photo, family portrait. Mm-hmm. What good example is she setting by just looking at this family? None. Do you want your daughters to grow up looking like Kamala Harris's daughter? Uh, stepdaughter. Stepdaughter? Do you want your husband to... Look like he's been hanging out in a closet his whole life? Exhibit traits of Kamala Harris's husband? Do you want to be... Do you want your president to be a woman who tells you that abortions are basically a form of birth control and every woman should be allowed to get one? Probably because her husband believes that they, that should happen because he forced the nanny to get one. Besides that, Barack Obama, he looks unhealthy. He doesn't look like Michelle Obama's been feeding him. They're trotting out Barack Hussein Obama to beg people to vote, telling them not to despair. Democrat Party internal polling must be cratering. Cratering. Pennsylvania, that is the choice in this election. It's not just about policies that are on the ballot. It is about values. And it is about character. I'm not going to lie. What are you going to say? That's literally where he loses me when he says it's about value, it's about character. Normally, when when Obama was, you know, trying to get elected and he was in office, I liked his speeches. I liked the way he talked. He was calm and he told you what needed to be said and whatever else. And I actually liked him uh, before I, you know, he was, was red pilled, I guess is he the right thing. He was a good speaker. He was a good speaker. He was mesmerizing. <laughs> All right, Will Ferrell. Um, but he used to speak well, right? This one here sounds like a man who is desperate because he sees the end of the line and the end of the line being his ability to pull any kind of strings or have any sort of leeway or power in politics or the White House or the country at this point. And he's he's desperate because President Barack Obama would not have yelled like that, would not have sounded angry like that, would not have um, basically told people that because your skin is this, you have to do this. Even when he was running, he, he didn't he didn't put it that way. It's almost like whoever wrote his speech and put it on the teleprompter, they did it in all caps. I was about to say the same thing. All caps, a lot of exclamation points. Like, and it's bold. Maybe italicized certain <laughs> words. Elon Musk, he removed the bold feature on uh, X. He's like, y'all are using this way too much. This is, <laughs> We're my, done. my brain is bleeding. So, honestly, I'm going to tell you, Barack Obama used to provide speeches that, in a word... In one word, Barack was inspiring. He was motivating. If you ever, if you ever go down that motivational video rabbit hole on YouTube, they'll start sending you these these videos. It's like they really get you going. It's like a very strong tone voice, and there's an eagle flying at some point. Somebody's doing the ropes at the gym. It's like overcoming adversity, and it really gets you going. Like it really gets you. Are you like, Alex it, Mosey? It makes you think that you could literally do anything. Mm -hmm. Which is good. But what I just saw and heard from Barack and what I just showed you guys, you see it, seems threatening. It doesn't seem inspirational. It doesn't seem motivational. It seems threatening. It seems angry. It seems angry. He's an angry old man. Angry people yelling at me like that aren't going to make me do anything that they want done. Isn't going to make me happen. It's going it, to... You're right. It, it'll do the opposite. Like he, he it's, it's almost like... He's scolding children. Mm -hmm. This is like he's scolding children who've done nothing wrong. They've done nothing wrong, and he's scolding them. But to him, they have because they're not they're not voting for his. He friend. don't know that. He's just on he the damn rally. Yeah, it's just voting just started. That's true. So whether this election is making you feel excited or scared or hopeful or frustrated or anything in between. Do not just sit back and hope for the best. Get off your couch. And uh, this is where I was going to talk about Tim Walz. Because that was one of the references that he made. Mm -hmm. I'd love to debate the guy. That is, if he'll get up off the couch. 
Well, I mean, th- even at the DNC, remember, they were all using the exact same phrases, the exact same wording, the exact same everything, because it's just a script that gets passed around from person to person to make sure they're hitting these same key points, the, the keywords, the target keywords to stuff in there. But from, uh, the, but from the Democrat Party, Tim Walls, getting up off the couch, being on the couch is a negative. It's an implied negative. Mm-hmm. As he used it to reference J.D. Vance in the couch story. Well, Obama's doing it the same way. He's using it as a negative if right. you're just sitting on the couch. Why is he scolding and screaming and threatening a crowd of, theoretically, Democrats? I don't know any Republicans who would choose to be at this rally. Why is he screaming and yelling at them as if they've done something wrong and then calls them lazy pieces of shit Basically. for being on the couch? Well, it's funny. Is they, they went there, so obviously they're not that lazy. They got up they're off stupid. the couch. They're stupid. They're dumb. Up. They did get off the couch. You're right. They were motivated. Maybe there's no. I can't see the crowd. He's just yelling. I don't know if there's anybody there. It could be AI. It could be. Could be a empty room. Could be a studio audience. We don't know. But uh, I just think the optics here are freaking awful. And vote. Put down your phone and vote. Grab your friends and family and vote. You know what would be one of the safest ways to vote? Through your phone. Nobody else is going to get into my phone and be able to vote for me. No, don't, don't give them that idea. But it no, feels like that no, could no, honestly no, be no, like no, the... No, the, no, the, no, 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 no. Why did you redeem it? It feels like that could be the safest way. There's no paper ballot to get, you know, shredded. There's no Dominion voting machine to get no, tampered with. Not, no, I'm going to tell you right now why that won't work, okay? Okay, tell me. Not everybody has a phone, so no, it takes out the no, voting the for government will give you a phone, but all of a sudden, Verizon's towers are down. Uh, yeah. Okay. All of a sudden, that's the towers true. are down. That's true, because that did happen last week. They said that Verizon got hacked. All right. Back to what you were saying. So Obama's telling folks what to do. To go out and vote. Get up off the couch. Grab your family. How about the fact that some of these people don't have family because they've lost loved ones because oh. of Kamala Harris? How about the fact that some of these people can't do this because they work multiple jobs just to be an just to make enough money to be poor and, and broke and living paycheck to paycheck but they can't afford the time to take off and pay to have transportation to go and vote because of commonomics because of terrible economic policy which we're going to get into that in just a second vote for kamala harris as the next president of the united states vote for tim walls as the next vice president of the united states vote for bob casey who the hell is bob casey and what state is he in? Who the hell is Bob Casey? I've heard his name a lot. Bob Casey Jr., I think, in fact. So he's running for Senate, I guess, mm-hmm. for Pennsylvania? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know who shouldn't be allowed in the Senate? Josh Shapiro, the guy who's signing his name to nukes or to um, uh, missiles. He's governor. I know. But he should not be allowed to run for Senate. Is he running for Senate? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just putting it out there. He shouldn't be allowed to. Shapiro? Uh-huh. But he's... Is he? He's the governor. No. I'm confused. I was just saying, because of what he did, he shouldn't be allowed to run for a senator. Well, or a Senate. Bob Casey? Josh Shapiro. But he's not running for Senate. I know that. But why would you say he shouldn't be allowed to do something he ain't trying to do? That doesn't make Because what sense. if he tries to do it? I don't think that that's... The, we don't speak in hypothetical. <laughs> I play the what if game all day long in my head. Now you've been invited to the game. So Bob Casey, according to Dave McCormick, voted for every spending package Harris and Biden rammed through Congress causing rising costs across Pennsylvania. Bob Casey is the reason why life is unaffordable for the people in Pennsylvania. Okay, think about that. According to Dr. Paul Kingore, it's hard to imagine a worse betrayal of a legacy than Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey Jr.'s political reputation of his late father, Pennsylvania Governor Bob Casey Sr., the last great pro-life Democrat. That's crazy when you, as a son, compared to your father, are described as hard to imagine a worse betrayal of a legacy. Weak. Ouch. Weak. Senator, uh, Pennsylvania Senate, 
Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey actually has a point here, according to Donald Trump Jr., okay? So, it's coming from Donald Trump Jr. This ought to be good, right? It is impossible to bring prices down if we re-elect Democrats like him and Biden, or better yet, Kamala, who gave us this inflation crisis in the first place. Quote, I'm not proposing that we're going to be able to bring these prices down. That is impossible, says Bob Casey. I'm not proposing that we're going to be able to bring these prices down. That's impossible. <laughs> Oops. He said the quiet part out loud, folks. President Trump is right. Charles R. Downs says that Bob Casey is a terrible United States senator. Casey empowered border czar Kamala Harris and then ran away after he was asked about her record. One can't get any more awful than that. Open border Bob is a disgrace. So for those of you, <laughs> you know who didn't OBB? know. OBB? No. <laughs> open border Bob, OBB. <laughs> I had no idea who he was until just now. And I've... I've, I've had enough of Bob Casey. We're done. You're done. For Barack Obama to stand here on this stage and yell and scream with so much anger. Vitriol. Isn't that the word? Vitriol. I don't know. I, just, I, I know that word and I wanted to use it in a sentence. Isn't he's, that the right way to use it? He's fiery. He's so fiery. And he's, then try and convince me, a, a, a man of sound mind, that essentially I'm his target audience. I'm a black man not voting for Kamala Harris. So he's going to sit here and gaslight me, lie to me, yell and scream at me, and then introduce me to Bob Casey. These are all terrible things. <laughs> terrible ideas. So you're not doing a good job. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Unless he's being paid more by Donald Trump to do this than he's being paid by Kamala Harris. And this whole incredible Pennsylvania Democratic ticket Help your friends and family members and neighbors and co-workers do the same. Because if enough of us make our voices heard, we will leave no doubt about the election outcome. We'll leave no doubt about who we are and what America stands for. I have to wonder if at this point in time, they would be better off touting Kamala as the Indian female that she is, as opposed to trying to push her for the black community. Do they not want the Indian vote? Well, I guess not, because they refuse to really acknowledge the Indian side of her. She, she you know, talks about her mom, but they don't, they don't use the word Indian. They don't acknowledge how she grew, actually grew up and her heritage and stuff like that. They just, you know, they're pushing this. Her father's from Jamaica, which does not automatically make him black. It means he was born in Jamaica. That's, that doesn't change anything. Um, they're trying to say that, you know, because she's black, that you should vote for her. But what if that's what's hurting her more in the long run? Not because she's black, but because they're pushing it hang so on, hard. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Now my brain is hurting because you're telling me that as Barack Obama stands there and he, you know, he holds this little, this little get together with these, with the brothers, and tells them that because she's black and they're black, they need to vote for her. Mm -hmm. Which then means that inherently, because people are white and she's not white, they shouldn't vote for her. That's pretty much what it comes down to. But if, if they were just talking about Kamala Harris as a woman, maybe, but if they're talking about her as a woman of color, that includes numerous different backgrounds and it's more inclusive than just a black female because she's not just a black female if she's even part black at all. She's also Indian and Caucasian. So they're, they're, they're disregarding a full aspect of who she really is to, to focus only on one aspect in hopes of getting votes from that possible so, aspect. So, so you mean to tell me, so, so what would the argument be if Republicans were running a black female? If Republicans so, are running so, a black female, they would say vote for the best option, which is which is an, a name. The Republicans are not going to say but, vote for her because she's a woman, and they're not going to say vote for her because she's black. Just like they're not saying vote for Trump no, because no, he's no, a man no. and vote for Trump because he's white. But if Republicans were running a black female, uh huh, and Obama's standing here saying you should vote for her because she's a black female, what would 
what, what would be the differentiation if Republicans were running a black female? They like, wouldn't be talking about it in that aspect then. But he's now he said it. He, I, yeah, he has. Not said that he cares it, so about what, it, what he said. No, it'll not be at all. memory hold. But that is what it comes down to. Like that's what I'm saying. The fact that they're trying to base this whole entire campaign and this whole entire presidential race off of a black female perspective, it it ruins it because if there were two females, number one, there goes your vote for her because she's a female. It'd be cool to have the first female president, which is what they're pushing. But if you also had another black female, then there goes everything. If Donald Trump was black or J.D. Vance was black. They wouldn't be able to use that black card either. That is what they're banking on because that's the, those are the only two things that the Republicans don't have. They don't have a black and they don't have a female. You know what would have been hilarious? Uh, an ultimate troll would be for Republicans to run a black female prosecutor from Jamaica. Or Haiti. <laughs> no, no, a black female prosecutor with Jamaican heritage. She mm-hmm. can't be from Jamaica, right? And run Donald Trump as her VP running mate. That would have been hilarious. Oh, yeah. because That would have been hilarious. Because, especially when it would be a, a proven factual thing with who, with the Republican candidate that, person. That would have you know been hilarious. I mean? And then day one, she goes, ah, oh, I resign. Donald Trump wins. He can take <laughs> over my spot. You may be president now, sir. And together we'll keep building a country that's more fair and more equal and more just and more free. That is our task. That is our responsibility. Let's go do it. Thank you, Pittsburgh. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Let's go vote. Do you think Obama realizes that everything you just said there at the end is not at all what is happening with our administration when it comes to the amount of money and, and resources they're giving to illegal immigrants from all, right. all different countries as opposed to American citizens? Do as I say, not as I do. That's what that's their whole thing. And that's why I think a lot of people are pissed off and moving away from the Democrats because they are a do as I say, not as I do uh, faction. I'm going with faction. So there's a, there's a phrase, there's a saying, and it's actually in a movie called The Gambler. And um, that's the Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, and who's the big guy? Um, that would be Sully. That would be Dan from Roseanne. That would be John Goodman. I had to work my way to it. <laughs> and there's a scene in the movie where he he tells Mark Wahlberg's character, he goes, "Dude, you need to get you to the point." He goes, "You need like two million, one and a half, two million. Put it in an IRA." He goes, "Get you some fuck you money and just live a good life." And Obama has got fuck you money. And Obama can literally do and say whatever he wants because he's got enough money. Literally, that's what it boils down to. Mm-hmm. He's got enough money. And maybe maybe some of his deepest, deepest, darkest secrets haven't been exposed yet. The key is to have a lot of money in those secrets. Which, yes. Because obviously you can see with Diddy, you, just having a lot of money isn't good enough, right? Especially if, you got a lot of secrets. if your secrets is that bad, right? Or if you cross the wrong person who then decides to expose your secrets, right? Your vulnerabilities. But Barack Obama saying that a country that's fair? How fair is it that people work really hard to pay off their student loans, some of which to Ivy League schools, including Yale, that the Democrats love to poke fun of and make fun of people for going to these schools. How fair is it that they did that and then others didn't and they got their loans forgiven? How fair is it that a lot of citizens now, naturalized citizens, went through the long, grueling, strenuous, arduous process of expensive becoming... Expensive process. Expensive process. Do not forget expensive. They had to put their money in, at least 10 grand to get your green card and become a legal citizen. So Tough and challenging to do when, you know, you're coming here to, for create an opportunity. How fair is that when you just literally open the, the door and let people in? And then hand them stuff for free. It's not even that you let them in. It's that as they were working their way in, you basically let them rob you blind by handing it to them with a smile on your face and telling how them that how fair it's okay. is it that under this administration our cities are getting destroyed s- soldiers were discharged wrongfully discharged for not getting a jab dishonorably discharged for not getting a jab and then given a non apology and told they could come back mm mm-hmm. Yeah, at no point in time would I, as a soldier, want to go back to fight for a country that shit on me at the first chance it got. How fair is it that 
People have worked their entire lives to look forward to the opportunity of barely getting by on Social Security to then realize that this administration is letting Social Security dwindle away and at best they will receive 75 to 80 percent if they're lucky. Every time I see somebody that's like in their late 80s or 90s working a job, I'm immediately pissed off. I don't know what Obama's talking about, but this shit does not seem fair to me. No. But, like I said, he's got money. He got fuck you money. And, um... It's interesting to me that these people that are screaming right now about everything are the same ones sitting on millions of dollars. This, well, which is DNC, exactly why they want the, the Democrats to stay in, in power because it's because of the Democrats that they have been able to acquire all this wealth. The DNC was such a, a hypocritical joke to have folks like Bernie Sanders and, and, and AOC and others get on stage dogging billionaires and then J.B. Pritzker to step on stage as a billionaire. Mm-hmm. And have Michelle Obama say, you know, what she said. She ain't giving up any of her mansions. Or to have, oh yeah, her especially, you know, her mom taught her, blah, 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 you shouldn't have more than you need. Ma'am, you have seven houses and millions upon millions of dollars. Take take a fucking seat. But the other problem is they sit there at the DNC and talk about family values, family this, family that, and then you can go right out the door with a bag of popcorn and go get your uterus scraped out. Okay, tell well, me how, how that's family how, values. How do you have family values when you can't even create a family? You can't create a family because they're trying to get you to kill off every baby. You can't create a family because you can't afford to. Well, they're trying you can't to get, create, you can't a create a family because they're trying to convince men to chop off their wieners and trying to convince women to close up their vaginas and trying to convince everybody that they're gay. And you can't create a family because you're scared that they're going to, you know, have to oh, live in this world and, and, and fend for themselves and try to survive this dangerous, dangerous place from so many different perspectives of danger. It's not just one. Hey, it's time to go pick up the kid. <laughs> but it's like, well, why is Barack Obama doing this? Or better yet, how did Barack Obama get so rich? And how did he get so wealthy? He wrote a book. Really? So did so. Kamala Harris. But in her book, it contradicts the things that she's saying on the campaign trail. So that's interesting. So Barack, he, he he's reminding me of how to get rich quick. Okay. And this is what I read earlier today or yesterday. I can't remember. It says breaking. Carrie Underwood is paid $1 million each week to do the Sunday Night Football theme song. Mm -hmm. But the Post says that she films all of it in one day and she got paid $18 million for that. $18 million in one day. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much do our soldiers get for risking their lives for us? Now, I will say that the caveat here is that readers added context they thought people might want to know which i feel like is what we're doing to barack obama and pretty much anything that the democrats put out and the mainstream put out we're adding context that we thought people might want to know and it says that this is a flat out this is flat out false as stated by carrie underwood directly in an interview so i just wanted to put that out there okay I'm not trying to spread misinformation, but I will share the truth. And the truth is that Barack Obama gets paid for speaking engagements. Kamala Harris's campaign raises money to be able to fund and pay for everything that you see happening on the campaign trail. So don't think that Barack Obama didn't get broke the fuck off. Yeah, uh, he's there out of the goodness of his pocket, not his heart. For yelling and screaming at these people. She's like, if you can really sell it and really get emotional, I'll, I'll throw in a couple extra hundred bills for you. Breaking. We got Mama Nina Turner blasts Democrats and Barack Obama for focusing frustrations on black men. When Kamala loses, it will be because of Kamala, not because of anyone else. Uh -huh. Quit blaming it on the people and blame it on her for not being a worthy candidate. They need to appear, appeal to the needs of the voters. And so when I was a delegate for President Obama in both of his elections in Ohio, right now the vice president is down 11 points in Ohio, even though I, I fully expect President Trump to take Ohio, as he did twice, but to be down 11 points compared to President Biden, that is a problem. But this other issue I want to bring up is a problem, too. Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? Now, a lot of love for former President uh, 
uh, Obama. But for him to single out black men is wrong. And some of the black men that I have talked to have their reasons why they want to vote a different way. And even if some of us may not like that, we have to respect it. So unless President Barack Obama is going to go out and lecture every other group of men from other identity groups, my message for Democrats is don't bring it here to black men who, by and large, don't vote much differently from black women. Why is it okay for Kamala to employ Barack Obama to specifically target black men voters, but it is not okay for Donald Trump to state how all of a sudden Kamala Harris is now black? And he didn't state it. He was asked a question about it, and he said, I didn't know she was black. He was just saying, he was having a conversation. They said, a black female goes, well, I didn't know she was black up until they decided to talk about it. She was Indian. Like, that's what she ran as in 2020. That's what she ran as for a, for attorney general. Everything else, she's never run as a black woman before. So why now is she suddenly a black female? If she was that the whole entire time, she would have run on that the whole entire time. But instead, she, she ran on Indian and South Asian Pacific. So it's not okay for this reverse racism of a white man, albeit Donald Trump, to even remotely mention Kamala Harris's blackness, but it's 100% okay for Kamala Harris to shift the direction of her campaign focus on specifically only targeting black men. Makes me think of that SNL skit we saw last night. Make that make sense. Here's the problem. It's okay for them to run on a pro-black platform, for them to say that you should vote because she's black, you should vote for her because you're black, you should vote for this because you're black. But if Trump were to come out and say, you shouldn't vote for her because you're black and she's, you know, not Yeah, but at the it. same time, Trump can't, no one on Trump's side can say you should vote for him because you're white. But that, that is the complete double standard. They should, could, but you should he vote would for get him dragged. because you live in Florida. You should vote for him because you're from Queens. He could do all the they could people could do all those things, but they would get dragged. You can't get dragged for doing the, the thing with the black You'll thing because it's, it's a different kind of racism. If you if you are positive towards blackness, you're fine. But if at any point in time something negative comes out of your mouth about blackness or ethnicity in general, you will get dragged. And then the media will then say, all right, now we're going to take it to Obama where he's specifically targeting black men. And it's like, can you say double standard? Can you say, you know, what is it? Uh, identity politics? Mm -hmm. Can you say bullshit? Can you say we only got 25 days left and we'll be, we'll be through with this thanks for watching say bye michelle bye michelle